Boy, both your five brothers were lucky last night. Very, very fortunate to get the decisions that they got. That being said, I do actually think that Cal Yufai won his fight. I think he did just enough after that torrid first two to three rounds. Um, but I think I gave him the second. So, like, one, three, and four was all Pakla for me. But, um, you know, sort of Cal with the body work kind of sort of took it back, took the legs away from Pakla. His gas tank started to run empty. And I think uh, Cal just kind of got on top of him afterwards. So, yeah, um, he did just about enough to get the decision. Um, but if he had have lost, I couldn't really have argued too tough. Galal Yafai, on the other hand, he definitely got beat. Um, I don't know how he managed to get the victory, but you know what? For the sake of my accumulator, I'm going to let this robbery stand. You know what? Shout out to Zelfa Barrett. Um, I actually didn't give him much of a hope prior to the, um, the fight taking place against Rakamov last night. I did think that he would be fairly competitive in the opening stages and he would look to be on the back foot and counter quite a bit which he's normally quite very economical with his work but I just thought the Rakamov the, the pressure would kind of get to him and he'd end up having to get into survival mode um, ultimately that is kind of what happened although he had a lot more success than I was expecting um, I did bet against him but after a while I was kind of hoping that you know I did lose the bet I was willing him to go on I uh, don't know what happened to his leg but um, equilibrium kind of you know got taken away out at points and then ultimately yeah got put down I was kind of hoping that he would go the distance and, and just lose on points uh, but yeah he got stopped but it was a it was a good performance from from Zelfa and he's definitely going to be able to, to bounce back from that one so big up to him and congratulations to Rakamov who's now got those Joe Cordina problems uh, don't really know if he's ready for those at this stage to be honest not with his punch resistance and the amount he gets hit but hey let's see what happens well it seems like we got a new undisputed champion at 140 and she goes by the name of Chantel El Capo Cameron now I don't know exactly what happened with Jessica McCaskill last night look she's never been the neatest of fighters or you know sort of had the you know the most intelligent game plan but she's always been a workhorse however last night she looked like horrible now again Chantel is a much more polished fighter than Jessica always has been always will be that in and out style was always going to give her problems but her footwork was atrocious all night I have no idea what she was working on I don't know if there was an injury prior to camp but whatever whatever deficiencies she had they got exposed badly last night uh, the only benefit now is the fact that she's still got three belts at 147 so she can use those as bargaining chips for probably the Tasha Jonas fight or you know maybe a Terry Harper fight or something down the line um, but yeah uh, she's got some work to do but Big ups to Chantel Cameron, well deserved, new undisputed. Uh, probably if, if the Serrano fight don't come again for Katie Taylor, then that looks like that's probably going to end up being the next one at Croker Park next year. Sort of what, May, June time? Look forward to it. Let's see what happens. Dimitri Bivol with the masterclass showing how you pressure the pressure fighter and how you bully the bully. He kept Zerdo Ramirez on his back foot virtually the entire fight. Zerdo was scared to throw and every time he did throw pretty much he got lit up consecutively like in every round. There was maybe two rounds I gave Zerdo and those are only the rounds where Dimitri Bivol virtually did nothing. Uh, but yeah everyone was talking about the body punching and punching in combinations he was scared to let his hands hands go all night and yeah 44 and 0 but it just goes to show that you can pad out a record as much as you want when it comes to those those upper level guys b plus a minus a a star you will get found out and he's been found out now probably he's going to end up having to move up again uh he might have a bit more success in the cruiserweight division as opposed to light heavyweight but we'll see either way uh bivol i'm ready for that baturbiev undisputed fight it's needed 
David Morrell Jr. with a stunning 12th round TKO victory over Ados Yosevanuli. Um, it was a pretty much a masterful performance. Um, now, funnily enough, apparently this guy's been waiting to fight Morrell for the last 14 months, but he probably should have been in the ring keeping himself sharp because he was missing like quite badly all night. Um, yeah, I mean, look, David Morrell Jr. He's definitely one to watch. Um, look, we all knew the skills was there, but you know, this time he was actually in there with someone that had, you know, never tasted defeat, had that kind of record, just knew, you know, someone that you thought was going to be like a danger. And yeah, he just pretty much dismantled him all night, um, busted up his face like crimson mask, and then by that twelfth round, yeah, two knockdowns, second one vicious. Morel Jr. is the truth. So let's see where he goes from here. But um, you know, eight and oh, seven KOs. It's a good work. Good work.